before lunch break. The next session is about CFFI, and we don't need presentation for the speaker. Um, Army has been a long time well known member of the Python community working on PyPy and uh, CFFI and other stuff. So, welcome him and thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, work. Okay, so today I'm going to present mostly CFFI and talk a I'm going to talk a little bit about PyPy as well because, well, we need to have one PyPy talk at every Euro Python, and so we haven't <laughs> any this year, so well. Okay, so first CFFI. What is CFFI? Well, f first CFFI is a project that we created about 2012, and it is actually a very successful project according to download statistics of PyPy. Uh, well, you can see numbers like it, 3.4 million downloads every month nowadays, and it's actually, it, is, it has beaten Django, cool. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the main reason why it is so much successful is that there are a few very successful projects like cryptography that have switched to it. So, so it means that every time you do pip, pip install cryptography, you also, you also actually install CFFI as dependency. Uh, well, PyPy. PyPy is probably a successful project. It's harder to say for sure. And I will talk more later. So let's start with CFFI. CFFI is how do you call C code from Python, right? Because, because, because obviously you, you have C code, like everybody has C code. Like most libraries out there are actually C, C stuff. And if you want to call into one of them, then you need something. So CFFI is just one more thing to, one more solution to call C code from Python. And well, the name CFFI comes, well, it's boring, just means C for in function interface. Uh, it, well, it shares ideas from a lot of projects, actually. The, the original motivation comes from Luajit, Luajit's own FFI module is similar. But then, but then we took a lot of ideas from, from other projects like Siphon, C-Types, Swig, and so on. Um, so here is a demo. Let's say you want to call this essential function from uh, any, any POSIX system, get pw9. Uh, what do you do? Well, you first do man get pw9. You see a man page. The man page contains this. Like it's, it tells you, okay, you need to include this and that. And then you get this function, get pw9, that takes a char star argument written your strict password star. And then a bit later in the main page, the struct password should have roughly these fields, like uh, pw name, pw password, pw uid. Uid is a type, type uid t. This is all fine if you're programming in C, and this is all a mess if you're programming in Python. So what do you do with CFFI? You you write this code in. Uh, Python script. You import CFFI, you make a CFFI builder. You do CFFI builder.cdef, triple quote, triple quote, and here we have a big string. And this big string, you, you copy and paste parts of the man page. Like I'm going to say, type def int uidt, except I'm not exactly sure it's an int, right? It could be long, short, whatever because it's C. So, so, so I'm going to say int dot dot dot, which, which means, in CFFI, it means some kind of int, but I'm not sure exactly which kind of int. And then you do the same with the struct password. You say it's a structure that has a field pwurdt that, that, I know that's a urdt, but then the struct passwords contains tons of more stuff and I don't know 
what they are, and they will depend on the platform that you're running on, and so on and so forth. So you just say colon, colon, uh, dot, 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 colon, for, or it just means, and other fields here, right? Here, the dot, dot, dot are really meant as dot, dot, dot in the source code. It's not meant as this demo glosses over details, right? And then, and then you copy paste the line for get pw name. That's easy. Okay, and uh, then the, the man page also had something about include. So we paste them here in some other declaration. And in this FFI builder.set source, we also say give a name pw uid cffi, that's the name of something that we want to create. Okay? So, so you, you, put, you put these two slides into one file, one Python file, you run it, you run it, and up you get pwuidcffi.so. And now this pwuidcffi.so is a standard C Python executable uh, extension module. So once you got it, in your main program, but code, in your main program, you just import it. You import lib from this module, and then lib is something that has a, an attribute, well, a function, built-in function, called get pw num, and you call it, and when you call it, you got, you're going to get a struct password, so, so you can read the field, pw uid, print it, and this works so in this simple way, we have made an interface to call this C function from Python. And that's it. Okay, so, so what I'm going to talk about now is, yes, it's not completely as simple as that in all cases, so I'm going to, to have some more examples about more complications, like, the, the first one is that actually in this built-in module you get two objects. There is lib, but there is an, also an object called FFI, and this FFI contains general helpers that you may need to call at some point. So the, the general helpers, um, uh, yes, sorry, this is also, this is also w w other things that you can do in the CDEF. You can, you can declare your functions, you can also have types that are completely opaque, like dot, dot, dot. This is, for example, what you get if you have a C library that has an interface, like, like make a window and it returns you a window star, but you don't need to know or care what is the type window. And then hide window, destroy window, all these are C functions. Okay, uh, about, about the FFI object now. In the FFI object, you get, you get a few helpers. For example, if you really want to make a C structure, like here I want to make a structure that is of type char underscore. So, so um, well, char brackets. That, that, that means, like, if you, know, if you know C, you know exactly what char bracket is, right? So this is, this is generally the approach of CFFI. You need to know a little bit of C, but then if you do know a little bit of C, then it's easy because it's the same. So you can, with ffi.new, you're creating an object of type char bracket and you're initializing it from a string. So you get in P some C data of type char bracket and it owns 12 bytes. And if, if you count actually, it's the number of character plus one because there is a terminating null character as traditionally in C. And you can, well, you can index it, you can read or write to individual items. Uh, you, get, you get also another kind of C data, for example, by co the, the call that we did before, lib.getpwnum. Well, first, First, we did it before in the example by giving directly a string, but you can also give it a char bracket, which means an array of characters, like 
P, so the P in this example. And well, in any case, you get as a result Q, which is actually another C data of type struct password star, and it leaves at this address in memory, and then you can index it, uh, in a, sorry, you can get its attributes. So there's attributes that are just the field names of this. Uh, so from this, from such a queue, you can also cast it to void star or to anything else. This is the C rules of cast. You can cast it to another pointer type. You can cast it to an integer type. Like if you want to cast, if you have the pointer and you want to really get the number that represents, that represents this pointer address, then you cast it to an integer type and, and well, I mean, I could have written ffi.cast long or int, but instead I'm using the type int ptrt, which is an, officially, an official C type to, that means uh, an integer that is large enough to contain a pointer. But it, it's just the same, and I'm getting a number that is uh, integer valued pointer. So these are the kind of things that are in the fi object. Uh, you also have ffi.string. So this is another example where I, in my structure, I have pwuid, okay, that's 500, but I also have pwname, and reading it re returns a char star. And then from this char star, you can, you can convert it back to a Python string if you want. So this is uh, what ffi.string is for, and so on. Uh, one example, if you are doing something a little bit more complex and you really want, you have a Python object like this x, this x in this example, I want to, I want to have this Python object cast it to a void star that the C code will just carry around and then at some point later the C code will give us back the void star and from that void star we want to go back to the Python object. I mean, this kind, of, this, this is standard, for example, in all callback systems. Like if, if you register a callback for a C library, typically you, you, give it, you give it the function to callback, and you also give it some kind of void star argument that the C library will just store and give it, it will give it back to your own callback. So, so in order to do that, you, you, you would use ffi.new handle, cast any Python object to a void star, then you save away, fish it again, you get a void star that happens to contain the same, void, the same value as a void star, and then from this value, you can go back to the original x object using ffi.from handle. So this is just one of example of more advanced things. Uh, well, CFFI as a whole supports more or less the full C language, which is actually not so huge. Um, I mean, supports the full C language, I mean, of course, not the, uh, the full declarations of C, like what you can, what types you can declare, what, what, how, you, how you can call functions, various, various uh, calling conventions and, and so on and so forth, like on Windows C def, um, on Windows C decl versus STD def, no, STD call, sorry. This is supported by CFFI. Okay, so it's more than this short introduction suggests, of course. Uh, like, like, if you really want, if you have some larger, larger library, larger C library that you want to interface with. Well, a typical example is that such a library, well, you don't want to expose directly as library, but instead you want to expose some kind of Python, some kind of Pythonic wrapping of the library. So what you do is you write your Python wrapper that itself uses CFFI, but it uses it internally. Like you write your classes and nice functions in Python and inside, internally, you would use these C data objects, but you would not actually expose them to the rest of the users of this 
of this wrapper that you're writing. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is typical. So ba basically, instead of, well, instead of writing, for example, C Python C extension module, where you would write in C a bit everything, like you write your C Python native types, and so on and so forth, and then, and then you get only the C extension C that people import and use directly. Well, here with FFI's idea is more that what people import and use directly will be the Python wrapper that itself uses CFFI. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, well, there are actually a few other use cases that I did not really speak about now. You can use CFFI in the mode that is called ABI as opposed to API, in which, in which, is, well, in which is a mode where you don't have any C compiler involved at all, and then, well, you get more like C types, as in you have to declare exactly your structures and your functions, and you're not allowed to make a mistake, and you're not allowed to use the dot, the colon, colon, no, the dot, dot, dot syntax I showed. Mm -hmm. Well, there is also support for embedding instead of extending. Which is, which is the case where you have your big program that is written not in Python at all, but it just wants to import and use Python for embedding. So for this case, there is a mode of CFFI in which you can write, so you write Python code, you declare, you declare with CDEF, the thing you declare with CDEF becomes the interface that is callable from the C code and then the rest of the program calls this interface and goes into your Python code directly. Okay, well, see the doc, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So, let's talk about PyPy for about three minutes. PyPy is a Python interpreter. It's different from the standard, which is CPython. The main goal of PyPy is speed. When you run PyPy, you get an interpreter. Looks, like, looks very much like CPython. The essential difference are four instead of three greeters and signs. In the prompt. But was it just the same, basically? You replace py, Python, my program dot py, with PyPy, my program dot py. Contains a JIT compiler, it's fast, it's cool, etc. Please use it. Uh, well, the main, the main difference, the, the main difference, is that, well, for example, it implements a very different kind of garbage collection than CPAF. It's a moving generational incremental garbage collector. Okay, if you don't know what these technical terms mean, it's fine. Uh, well, so the, the, the what I mean mostly is that because it is moving garbage collector, then we have troubles implementing the C Python C API interface. So, so it's hard for PyPy to import a C Python C extension. It's possible because of, uh, well, because we did tons of hacks basically, and it's possible and it's slow, etc. So it kind of works. I would say, I would say it works better and better, as in we can mostly do it for NumPy, for example, nowadays, mostly. So, soon announcement, etc. but yes. Well, PyPy is great right now if you, if, you, if you use Python and don't rely on a lot of C extension module, for example, everything, well, a lot of examples of web services are like this, like you import Django stuff, uh, whatever huge libraries, but that's typically written all in Python, so it works very nicely on PyPy. Okay. Yep. Well, the API is large and it's a mess to implement in PyPy. Well, I would I would argue actually that that this C 
API of CPython was actually part of the success of PyPy, of Python, sorry, the historical success of Python, why Python worked or started to be really useful like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it is also because it has this C, this C API and people actually use it to, to actually build interesting things on top of it. But, but well, and, and, and then you have all these, all these binding generators that have been built on top of it, so you don't need, well, you can write C extensions manually, but you can also use, these are the tools that would generate C extension for you, and CFFI is just one more such tool. Well, the different, the CFFI is a bit different, I would say, because, because the goal is really to not expose any part of the C Python C API. As in, yes, you can write C code with CFFI, but the C code that you write should not use any Pi object star or any Pi int from long or any of these functions from C Python. So it means it, it means also it means that it is possible to port this this whole CFFI module to other interpreters than C Python, and that's what we did. So that's one of the motivation for CFFI in the first place is that it is possible to write a PyPy version of CFFI, and indeed we did. And the example, the, the demo I showed in the in, in the start in the start of this talk, well, it works just exactly the same on top of CPython or on top of PyPy. And well, it, it is actually faster on top of PyPy because PyPy's JIT compiler knows a little bit about CFFI and is able to compile, to, comp to, to read, produce machine code that will directly call the C function, for example. So it's extremely fast, basically, on top of PyPy. But it, doesn't mean, it does not mean that it's extremely slow on top of CPython. On top of CPython's performance is acceptable as well. Yep. So yes, works on CPython, on PyPy. It would be easy to port to other Python implementations. Has not been done so far, as far as I can tell, like Jython on, or Aaron Python. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, the main benefit is that it is independent on, uh, it, it no longer depends on the C Python C API. So yes, use CFFI, it's easy and cool, and it is supported by non-C Python implementations, is conclusion of my talk. Yeah, thank you, Armin. Are there any questions? Who's first? Um, I have been, uh, well, uh, working with uh, CFFI like a few years ago. I also did, uh, well, mainly on Nordjoin, which is a C-based IoT uh, framework. And I encountered, like, it was really hard to create uh, when you have complex projects to create all the headers so that, uh, well, pre-compile all the headers uh, to uh, feed them to a CFFI to create the the um, uh, library. So uh, I actually, I, it wasn't documented at the time, I don't know if it's now, mm -hmm. but you can actually run the, use a compiler to uh, to pre-compile your header mm -hmm. uh, so that yes, it includes this, everything. This has improved, yes. Now, now, it's, now it's a cleanly separated two-step process, like you really, you rewrite a separate Python script that declares what you want, then you run it once, and you get your extension module. And then you use it from your main program. So it's better than it used to be, yes. Uh, 
Uh, thanks for the talk. That looks, looks really cool. Uh, I have a question about PyPy, actually, that I'll ask you because there is no separate PyPy talk, it seems. Uh, what is the status of uh, Python 3 work there? Like, it would be nice to get to 3.5. Uh, uh, is yes. it uh, anywhere I near? <laughs> I suppose I, I, if I were to give uh, an estimate of time, like I, I cannot obviously, but imagine that I could give an estimate of time that I would say that next year should be nicely progressed towards PyPy 3.5, yes. Uh, and what kind of help do you need? Uh, money, people? <laughs> Yes, well, we need, we need people on time. <laughs> yep, and money. <laughs> <laughs> or I forget money. Hi, thank you. Uh, another question about, uh, about PyPy. Um, there is some kind of tool to embed PyPy, like PyInstaller or PyTweaks, uh, or something like this, uh, to embed and redistribute uh, binaries of this. I don't know is the answer. Any more questions? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm the wrong person to ask, I suppose, but yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Armin, thanks for the talk. Thanks for PyPy. Thanks for CFFI. It's amazing. I use it quite often. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering, when you have the declarations with the ellipses, like dot, 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 <laughs> I don't care, you figure it out, <laughs> okay? Uh, can you, like, in very simple terms, explain how it goes out and finds out? Ah. Because it always works, okay? <laughs> so it's very good. <laughs> uh, like this, for example, UIDT is some kind of integer, yes. but, but we don't know which at all. So, so the, the magic is, the magic is to write one, C f one piece of C code that will work just by compiling it with normal C compiler. So, 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 well, every single, of, every single one of these dot, dot, dot is a different kind of magic. Like, for example, the type def int URDT, uh, it probably, probably contains, uh, how <laughs> does it work again? Um, it, it, yeah. okay, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, it must must be something like 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 uh, you write one big C expression that say size of UIDT equal equal one question mark, then I'm going to use this else, size of equal to, then I'm going to use that, etc., etc. And, then, and then, then you do an extra round of magic to know if it's signed or unsigned. Like, yeah, I mean, for, for signed versus unsigned, it's something like you, you take minus one, you cast it to URDT, and you ask it, is it positive now? <laughs> So we're at the end of the normal sessions uh, time from 30 minutes, but uh, food won't be there till uh, quarter two. So if people want to ask more questions and sit around, but just want to let you know that if you have to do something at a half past, you have to do it now. Thanks for your talk. Uh, I have a question about uh, defines. We have a project with a lot of uh, defines that are constructed dynamically during compilation from uh, a lot of nested macros, and uh, it's possible to use them by name in, in I mean, uh, in uh, Python code because actually I don't know they are writing so, there. So you mean defines like constants? Uh, yeah, for example, uh, we have a, a driver that uh, uses some I/O operations, and these. Uh, uh, Commands are uh, constructed from Linux macros mm -hmm. that actually I don't know uh, what they're doing. Some shifts, some source, some ors. Can I use yes. them by name? Yes. I mean, use dot dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically, you say you say here in CDF, um, um, hash define name space dot dot dot. And that means it's some integer, I don't know which one, figure it out. Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Any more questions? If not, thank you, Armin, and see you next year. <laughs>